today we're going to be uh, talking about perennials. Um, there's actually, with the perennials, there's some grasses and there's also some vines that we're going to talk about too that are all native. And uh, I will be showing you a picture of all the plants that are on this horizontal uh, page. And uh, like before, if you have any questions during the talk, please ask me. Um, so we'll get going. A plant is considered a plant that has been growing in this area um, from when the before the pilgrims came over and uh, the plants uh, they have evolved naturally with the various insects that are in the area so a lot of them are dependent or codependent on each other why I choose to use native plants is because my main thing is to bring bees and butterflies and birds back into the into the uh, landscape and not only to attract them for something to eat but also to put the plants in there for some place to live, um, for cover, for shelter. Um, so anything that anything that will bring a living organism back into the into the yard I'm, I'm all for it. Just for for grin some of the information uh, we have a plant list that I use as far as uh, when I do designs um, and we've got over 1,200 plants on them, and 20% of them are native, and 50% um, of our native plants are, are perennials. So we use a lot of native plants in our um, designs. Appalachian sedge. This is a, a cool grass that I use. Um, this likes dry soil, and I like to use this under trees that grass the lawn can't grow under and this will grow this gets about 8 to 12 inches tall the only thing is it, it grows as clumps as you can see so you need a lot of clumps kind of put together because they don't they don't spread by stolons but this put underneath a tree um, and you just let it grow to the you don't have to cut it like grass but it looks really nice it almost looks like a place where you can come down and sit Switchgrass or panicum. Uh, this is uh, this particular one, Northwind. This cultivar, Northwind, is very upright and uh, gets about four feet tall and has a very light and airy flower on it. And this one, I had this one in my yard. This one will get probably about anywhere to three or four feet wide. It's, it stay in one place. It'll get about four feet wide, but it always stays upright and. Um, very, very, very nice uh, grass if you live, live in a windy area. Um, it's, it's, you can hear the, the, blades, the blades of the grass kind of blow. Um, and again, a great one for the birds to eat the seeds off of. And uh, dry soil, where I had it was right next to the driveway. It was, I had to take an ax to, to dig the ground to get it in there and it's, it was very happy. Bearberry. This one is an evergreen and it gets about six inches tall, four to six inches tall, and it has a blueberry like flower on it, a little bell shaped flower on it uh, in the spring. And uh, this is the berry in the fall that the birds will eat. And then in the winter time, wherever you see the green leaves, it turns to a purplish red color. And then in the spring, it turns back to green. Uh, this tends, even though this is found a lot down by the shore, um, this tends to need a little bit more moisture. Um, if, it's, if you put it in a shady spot, um, once winter ends and spring comes, you're going to have a lot of dieback and you'll just have to cut back the dieback and it'll come back. But if it's in a little bit moisture site, you won't have as much dieback, but it's a great ground cover and it will cover, one plant will cover about eight feet. It, it grows pretty well. Blueberries. Uh, I use a lot of blueberries um, as ground covers in my designs and the blueberries, this particular one, Brunswick, uh, gets about a foot tall, foot and a half tall by about three feet wide and has the uh, bell shaped white flowers in the spring, um, similar to the picture before. The berries that you can eat in the summer and then it has a red fall color and then it'll drop its leaves for the winter time. 
usually with the low bush blueberries, um, you won't get these berries. The birds will get them. Um, they're very tiny, and uh, they're out there scattering around all the time, and, and they'll get the little ones. Uh, the big, the shrub, the shrub uh, blueberries are much nicer because blueberries are bigger. But I usually I have about 20 of these in my yard, and I just let the birds do their thing, and I keep the big ones over here to myself. Mm -hmm. But all the blueberries have the same attributes: the white flower in the spring, the blueberry in the summer, and then the bright red fall color. Bluets. This uh, you'll see these. Um, this used to be part of the lawns back before. Um, the four-part series of uh, fertilizing the lawn came. Um, but these are little tiny, it almost looks like grass, but then the little blue flowers come out and it's only that big, but they, they come in big clumps and they're beautiful. And they spread, they spread all over the place. This is a really nice uh, ground cover. Um, needs a little bit of a moister soil and part shade to part sun. Bunchberry. This is a, a very nice ground cover. It's in the dogwood family. Uh, it gets mm, about that big. And it looks just like a dogwood tree on a branch. These are the flowers. These are the bracts. In the fall, all these flowers eventually turn into red berries. And uh, then the leaves turn a red uh, for the fall color. Um, this particular plant needs shade and moist soil. If it doesn't have that, it's not gonna live. I've, I've tried it in a variety of different places and it has to have the shade and it has to have a moist soil. But it's a very nice ground cover that will spread. Wild geranium, geranium maculatum. This is one of, this is a deer resistant plant. Uh, this one has a, um, almost like a brownish purple leaf to it and starts to bloom in June and continually blooms on and off until frost and gets about 12 to 18 inches tall. Wild ginger. Um, you're probably familiar with the uh, uh, Japanese ginger that is shiny and it has a small leaf on it. Um, this has a leaf on it that's probably about this big and has the flower underneath the leaf and um, will spread. And this tends to like a little bit more sun than the, the uh, Japanese ginger. The Japanese ginger needs shade and moist soil. This can take a little bit more sun, so part sun, part shade, and uh, regular soil. Golden Star, this is a, a really great ground cover too. I use this a lot. Um, this gets about six to eight inches tall and this flower comes out in June, and this is a spreader. One little plant, they go in about this big, one plant will spread to about three or four feet. And this likes, uh, sort of like on the edge of a woodland, part sun, part shade, and um, is great to put between rocks, and, and so it's more of a woodland plant, but on the, on the outskirts of a woodland. Creeping Phlox. Uh, there's all kinds of colors. There's blues and pinks and whites and purples and uh, you name it, they've got it. This is evergreen and it grows to about three to four inches tall and this needs dry soil uh, and sunny. Um, and this would have to be um, fertilized. Now this is woodland phlox. This one grows in the woods where it needs to be shady and moist and this will spread, and it's evergreen. And this comes in pink and purple and white and light blue. Um, and with the plant, with the flowers, with the flowers, it's probably about this big. But this spreads all throughout the woodland, but the woodland needs to be moist. Ragwort, Senecio. This needs moist to wet soil. So if you have any wet spots on your property that are in shade, this is your plant. Um, and this will spread like crazy and it's a very pretty plant the bees love it the butterflies love it and uh, but it, it has to have the moist to wet soil white woodland aster we have this all over the place in our woodlands around here uh, it's a great plant again it's another one of the plants that the bees and the butterflies uh, uh, go after before winter sets in um, 
what has the white flower with the flower. The plant is probably about this big. Um, it likes a little bit moister woodland soil, but it's, it's a woodland plant, usually along the edge so it can get some sunshine. Beard tongue, uh, penstemon. This is a great uh, hummingbird plant. Any of the penstemons are great hummingbird plants and they come with pink, with red, purple, white flowers, um, but bees and uh, hummingbirds like this plant. And this one is a short one. This one gets, maybe it's about that tall when it's full grown with the flowers. And, uh, it's, and it's usually full of flowers like this. And it's, uh, I believe, in June when it blooms. Uh, bee balm. Um, bee balm is a great plant for uh, bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, and uh, it comes six feet tall to 12 inches tall. It comes in a variety of sizes, a variety of colors, except this one likes to throw itself around. So if you don't mind that, um, it'll, you know, you'll plant it here and it'll end up over there, and, and, but it's very easy to just pull it out and, and take care of it that way. But, and all kinds of colors from red to dark purple to pink to white. Um, and it blooms in the summer. And this is one of the ones that uh, I try to go after the ones that are disease resistant because they tend to get the powdery mildew. Um, so look for the ones that are disease resistant. Black Eyed Susan. Uh, this is the native Black Eyed Susan, uh, Fulgita Fulgita. It has a smaller flower on it and it's a little bit more yellow than orange and this is a great butterfly and a uh, bird plant in the fall um, and a great cut flower. Uh, let's see what else. Full sun, dry soil, and uh, kind of a depleted soil. Not a lot of fertilizer on black-eyed Susans. Now this is a tall black-eyed Susan. This is uh, Rutabecchia triloba. Uh, this one gets about three feet tall and this is the one that we, you would usually see growing in a meadow. Um, but again, it's a great bird plant, uh, butterfly plant, and bee plant. <laughs> New England Blazing Star. We have a, uh, a different cultivar of Blazing Star that uh, the flower buds are closer together and it's more of a solid flower going up. But this is the native version where it's a little bit more open um, and usually found like in the meadows out west. And, uh, but a great butterfly plant. Dry, depleted soil, and no fertilizer on this one. Baptisia, very nice plant. Uh, it gets big, it gets about four feet tall by about four feet wide, and it has a very uh, long taproot, so you better make sure where you're putting it is where you want it, because it's gonna be hard to dig this plant up. Um, but very pretty plant. It comes in purple, dark purple, yellows, whites, uh, very tall flower, about this tall. And then this is the pod um, in the fall that shows up and eventually turns black. Um, but a very, very, very big, big plant. Dry soil, full sun. Virginia bluebells, very nice plant. Um, this is another one that uh, comes up. It's gotta be in the woodland, moist soil. Um, comes up, it blooms before the leaves come out on the trees, and then this disappears by the middle of July. Um, and it's a gorgeous plant. It's a gorgeous, and it'll, it'll sell so. So if you had a moist woodland, as time went on, your, the, the base of your woodland would be all Virginia bluebells. Narrow leaf blue star. Very nice plant. This is the flower. It has a blue flower at the end of each stem, and each stem is very uh, light and airy and wire wiry, um, but eh, that's not why you plant it. This is why you plant it, because of the fall. The, uh, the yellow, the reds, the oranges, the salmon colors that it turns for the fall. Very, very nice plant. It's also deer resistant. Cardinal mm. flower. This is a moist to wet soil plant that will get about two and a half to three feet tall. And in this picture right here, it's that plant is there now. Next year, that plant won't be there. It'll be over there and it'll be over 
there, but that pretty much that main plant, it dies back and then it throws its seeds out. And it, so if you don't mind plants that self-sow, this is a great self-sower. Columbine. This is the native columbine. It's a little bit shorter. It's maybe about that tall with red and yellow uh, flowers on it. This is one of the first plants that the uh, hummingbirds come to when they come back from down south in the springtime. And there's, there's all kinds of colors of columbines. There's purples and whites and yellows and pinks and all different height sizes too. Coneflower. Uh, Ruby Star, particularly this one, uh, this one gets about three to four feet tall. This is a tall one. And uh, what's nice about all the cone flowers, they start blooming in June and then they keep blooming all the way till frost. It's a great cut flower, uh, it's a great bee flower, it's a great bird flower, and a great butterfly flower. Coral bells. There's tons of coral bells. There's all kinds of coral bells, but this is a native coral bell, uh, Heuchera americana. And this particular one gets, I believe, it's either a white or a pink bell-shaped flower on it. Um, but this is the leaf of it. It's a really pretty leaf. And uh, so once the, the flowers are way up here, once the flowers are all gone, this is what's left. As with all the coral bells, the leaves are all, all pretty. Um, but this stays as a clump and just gets to be a larger clump as it grows. This is a cool one. Uh, this is another heuchera. This is huge. This is um, Autumn Bride. It gets this big and it blooms in the fall. And the flowers on it are about this big. Um, actually, it blooms actually a couple times. It blooms a little bit in the spring, but then its main blooming time is August into September. Um, and with the flowers, they're probably about, about this tall. Uh, really pretty plant. So this is another one that you need a lot of room to put one plant. And this needs, um, I had this in full sun, um, but I would suggest to put it in part sun with a, a, a little bit of a moist soil. Regular soil, normal soil. Culver's root. This one gets tall. This one gets about six feet tall. This is a back of the uh, perennial garden flower. Um, and that's with the with the flower, it brings it up to about seven, six to seven feet tall. Um, and great bee plant, um, great butterfly plant, and uh, full sun and dry soil. Foam flower. There's <coughs> lots of different kinds of foam flowers. There's clumpers and then there's spreaders. I tend to use the spreaders. Um, if it's in a moist woodland, this would do great. And I usually mix it with the, um, the flocks, the woodland flocks that came in the purple and the pinks. And I kind of do drifts of that in a moist woodland and it really looks pretty. Um, and that's, that's called running tapestry is the, is the running one. Um, this one looks like a clumper, um, but a great flower. Uh, with the flower, it's maybe about this tall and the flower comes either um, white or pink and some of them do have a scent. Gentian, a uh, metal bottle, very pretty plant. Needs part sun to part shade, moist soil. And that's the flower. It'll open up just a little bit, but that's pretty much, it, it'll just open up just a tad. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's about maybe two and a half to three feet tall. And there's, there's a variety of, um, probably about five or six stalks that come up for one plant. Goat's beard. This looks like a, a huge astilbe. Um, and it, this one this one will get about five to six feet tall. Uh, edge of the woodland, uh, part sun, part shade. Um, blooms in June and July. And the flowers on it, probably about this tall. Goldenrod. There's all kinds of goldenrods out there, but I tend to like this one because it does look like fireworks. But goldenrods are great for um, bringing in bees, if you want to bring in bees. The bees really like the, this plant. Uh, the one in my yard, the, the plant is dancing with bees on it all the time during the fall. Um, very easy care plant, dry soil, uh, full sun. One of my favorites, I got a lot of favorites. Uh, Indian pink. This is, a 
part sun to part shade plant. It's a great hummingbird plant. And uh, each one of these stalks come down from the base of the plant. So once this is done blooming, it has about five or six flowers on it. Just cut that stalk off down at the base. And as long as it keeps getting cut throughout the season, it'll keep blooming for you. Um, but very, very odd flowers, but a very, very pretty plant. And that plant, it's probably about almost two and a half to three feet tall. And that's one plant by about three feet wide. Blue flag iris, uh, the narrow leaf iris that uh, blooms in the spring and needs a moist soil. Um, this one will spread and it'll you'll have enough to give to your neighbors all the way down your neighborhood. But uh, this is a very pretty plant when it's when it's all in a clump like that. So full sun, moist soil. Jacob's ladder. Uh, this is a shade plant, likes uh, a little bit of moisture, uh, but it's got a bluish purple flower on it. Sometimes uh, the uh, leaves are variegated with some of the cultivars, but a uh, very nice plant for moist shade. Joe pie weed. Okay, this, this is at my house, and this is in full sun, dry soil, and it loves it. This is one of these plants that can go from dry soil to wet soil. Usually you see Joe Pie weed uh, blooming in moist to wet soil. I have it in dry soil. I was just trying it out and it did fine. It's a tough plant. Marsh Marigold, this is definitely a wet soil plant. Um, grows, as you can see, right, right in the water or near the water. And uh, this blooms in the spring and around our uh, water areas and in the area you'll see skunk cabbage uh, come up in the spring. Mm. Later on, a couple of months later, you'll see marsh marigold come up and that's, that's where it likes it. It has to be wet, wet. Rose mallow, hibiscus. There's, um, there's a lot of hibiscus uh, cultivars, uh, but this is our native hibiscus. Uh, the flower on it is about this big and uh, it comes out in July and August, and the total height of the plant is anywhere from four to six feet tall. Tends to like uh, a little bit more of a moist soil and full sun. Missifuca, bugbane, snake root. Um, smells wonderful. Uh, and there's, there's cultivars that grow from this tall up to this tall, and the flowers on them about this tall, but, and, but the scent is very strong, very, very nice plant. Uh, and this blooms in July, uh, in the summer, and uh, great for bees. And this needs shade, part shade to part sun, and a little bit of a moist soil. Sneezeweed. This one, um, and there's different cultivars of this where they're, they're this tall, this tall. Uh, dry soil, full sun, and blooms like crazy. And it's a great um, bee plant and butterfly plant. Whenever you see a flower that's shaped like this, this is a great place for a butterfly. So all your composite flowers like cone flowers and um, black-eyed Susans are all great butterfly plants because that gives the butterfly a place to sit and just take its time while it eats. Solomon seal. This is a great uh, uh, woodland plant, and if it's happy, it's gonna it's gonna take over. So make sure if you plant this and you don't mind it spreading, it'll spread. And there's this one um, is the small one. So this one gets if this was the ground maybe it gets about this tall, but here's the flowers in the spring where you can see the bees love it. And then in the fall, everywhere there's a flower, there will be a red berry hanging from that that the squirrels will come eat, the chipmunks will eat, the birds will come and eat. Um, and there's, there's small ones like this, there's tall ones like this, there's, there's all different kinds. Um, but this is, this is a really pretty plant for the woodland. Uh, just make sure that you're okay with it spreading because uh, it will spread. <coughs> Perennial sunflower. This gets huge. This gets about six to seven feet tall, and 
it blooms in the summertime and it needs full sun and dry soil. Great for butterflies, um, mainly butterflies and, and bees. But it gets, it's a clump, it's a clumper and it's, it's like up to here. And uh, so if you have the space, it's a, it's a great, it, and it's just full of flowers, full of flowers. And sometimes uh, this one happens to be yellow. They have ones that um, have yellow and orange or all orange, but it's, it's a nice plant. Honeysuckle, um, this is Major Wheeler. This is a nice honeysuckle. The, the flowers on it are about this long. Um, wonderful for hummingbirds and for butterflies and bees. Um, and I like this because the flowers are so unusual. And uh, uh, it's, not, it's not like the Japanese honeysuckle that's in our woods. It's very tameable. Put it up on a tree or, or a, a something for it to climb on. It will not take over your garden like the Japanese honeysuckle in the woods do. Virginia creeper. This is naturally uh, growing in our woodlands. Uh, this gets a very um, incons inconspicuous flower on it in the springtime and then in the fall it will have a red berry on it that the birds will eat. And then it gets uh, bright red like this. This is really thick. Usually in the woodlands it's very um, wiry and very thin. Um, it, it, this is only because this has been getting pruned for a lot of years. But a very nice uh, vine that will not take over like bittersweet does, but it, it gives you that flower, the berry, and then the fall color. Um, and that can go anywhere from full sun to um, part shade and normal soil.